Hey y'all, it's Maddie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I know this is not a normal setting for me to be in. However, I just wanted to pop on here and introduce this video. I'm going to be not in the camera's view, but instead my tandem T-Slim pump will be. And I wanted to do a pump tour and give you guys an idea of exactly what the tandem T-Slim X2 pump looks like. Mainly for those of you who are just new to the tandem, I've been on tandem for nearly two years, or for those of you who are thinking of switching to a tandem insulin pump, you got an idea of exactly how to maneuver through the pump and how to change things and edit things. It's a little bit different, but once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. So um, this is what today's video is about, and I'm super excited to be doing this video. It's been a long time coming. I so wish I would have gotten this video out a long time ago, but I'm glad I'm doing it now. So anyways, with that being said, we'll jump right into the pump tour. Um, and I will see you guys for my next video. So I hope you guys enjoy. I love you all so much. So when you first take a look at the Tandem T-Slim X2 insulin pump, you'll notice it's rather small. It's not a very big insulin pump. Um, it's about the width of a dime. Um, this is where the cartridge is, and then the cartridge attaches to your tubing, which attaches to your cannula and your cannula housing, which I've shown you in previous videos. I hope to be showing you guys how I change my sights in some different areas and kind of how the Autosoft 90 or XCs work as far as insertion, um, as well as I will eventually do something in regards to the Autosoft 30. Again, a very different site. I use it for various different purposes, but I wanted to kind of show you guys exactly what this pump looks like. So I have a T slim specific T case here. It's got a little bit of a clip. So what's nice is you can actually flip this to have the clip go here and then it'll actually go vertical um, on wherever you'd like it to place um, on your pants or on your bra. Um, and if you hear Miss Tinkerbell, she's crying. I have two different cases just like this black one. I have a coral and teal one as well as a purple one. Um, and I did decide to put sunflowers not only for spring, it's one of my favorite flowers, but also to support Ukraine. So pray for those people over there who are struggling and suffering with the war going on in Ru from Russia. So um, anyways, this pump is that it's actually much thinner than you think it is. This cartridge comes out via right here, um, and you can use a little tiny, they give you like a cartridge changer. You can use um, a credit card or a coin to pop your cartridge out when you change it every single time. Um, so this is your on and off button. So you push this, and it shows you exactly what's going on. Um, it's been a rough, you know, 24 hours for me, so please excuse my blood sugars. Um, but if you see right on the main screen here, there's a few simple features that are real easy to find. So you have your battery percentage. Um, that alert will pop up when you have a high or a low. And then if you click one, two, three, this allows you to unlock the insulin pump. Um, and then it just tells me my CGM alert is high. Typically when you have control IQ, it will alert you that it will increase your um, insulin, but your sensor is reading above 200. Um, it recommends checking your tubing cartridge and your site to make sure nothing is going wrong. Um, and that little alert will dismiss. Um, when control IQ is on, that diamond will show. Um, it gives you the time and the date here, as well as um, the basal. So um, when the basal is light up like this, it is your regular basal. Um, when it's lower, it'll be kind of in an orangey color. When it's higher, it'll be in a blue color in that diamond. And then this gives you how much insulin is left in my cartridge. So in this case, 17 units. The nice thing with the tandem pump is that it does display your CGM readings right on the screen for you. So you can see exactly what they're like on the bottom insulin on board, as well as your options and bolus uh, calculator methods here. So um, if I hit bolus, I can click on it. It'll say air blood sugar is above target, add a correction bolus, hit that. It will dispense this much insulin to me if I cl click it again and then hit it again, it will confirm it. So I'm going to just confirm it for now. And then it does it a third time and you'll hear it beep. Now, if you quickly want to dismiss that um, pump, all you have to do is hit X and it will cancel the bolus for you. Real easy. Um, and then if you hit where these hour buttons are, you click here, you can go through three hours, six hours, 12 hours, and then 24 hours. Um, again, a little bit rough. Um, my day yesterday was great and then my cat died and then it was a total nightmare. Um, so then you click it again and it'll go back to an hour. Uh, usually I leave it at the three hour mark and that's usually what it defaults to. Now, if you go to bolus and you accidentally get here, here and you don't want to exit out, you can always hit this T button right here. It'll take you right back to the home screen, um, which is super easy. So same thing. If you go to options, you hit this T button and it'll take you right back to the home screen. It's a little trick I learned from my pump trainer and to shut the pump off, you can either hit the button 
or it will time out on itself after a certain amount. I'm big on the tea case, um, otherwise my pumps slide out of me. Some of you people have told me like I could put little pockets in my clothing, but I honestly don't think that's really something I'd be interested in doing. Um, I maybe could. Um, a lot of people use silicone cases and slip them in pockets. However, I like to make sure it's secured with a clip. I like to clip this. I can either clip it on my pants, on my bra, on my underwear, and it doesn't fall off. So super easy. Um, with dresses, it's a little bit trickier. <laughs> I usually do my underwear or I find like like some sort of elastic band and I wrap it around my thigh and try to like clip it on there. And then it, but it just gets awkward. So if any of you got any better suggestions for clipping a pump, please let me know down below. Um, but now that I kind of showed you the basics of what everything looks like, I will actually show you all the features in the options menu. Um, so if you go to options, this first button will stop your insulin. So you use that to physically stop the insulin, to take a shower, or X, Y, and Z. If you have control IQ working, you will have insulin suspended automatically if it predicts your blood sugar is going to be super low. It'll stop your insulin for you. It'll light up red. Um, and then actually this little B button here will be a zero and it'll be in red. So it'll let you know in multiple different facets your insulin's been stopped. So the load button is to what, what you use to change a whole insulin pump. And again, I'm going to delve into this later, but basically these are the steps that you need to change your cartridge and fill up your tubing and your cannula. Um, as well as your site reminders. My site reminders, I change my pump every two days. I find that works better for me as well as I have found in this crazy that my endocrinologist and I have kind of figured this out and I especially figured this out that my body, for whatever reason, I could take five units on this pump, pre-bolus the same amount of time and have my blood sugar spike. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, I can do the same thing in an injection. Like say take five units and wait 20 minutes or 25 minutes and pre-bolus and not get the same reaction. So I really only use my pump, as crazy as this sounds, for basal insulin control IQ features as well as small corrections and small meals. Anything super large, like over four units, I cannot bolus from this pump. So um, the activity button, if you click on that, there's an exercise mode and a sleep mode. So I have sleep mode. Um, used at night. So if you go to sleep schedules, it actually will show you my sleep schedules. So I have the um, sleep mode feature from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. on my workday weeks. And then sleep schedule two is from 10 to 6 a.m. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And what sleep mode basically does is instead of your control IQ auto bolusing for you and correcting, what it does is it just really either increases your basal rates or decreases your basal rates to keep your blood sugar Ideally, below 120. That's really that's really how the sleep mode features are good. Some people have run all day sleep modes before and have gotten really good results from it. I find it doesn't really work for me. I've tried that. So I keep it during just my normal sleeping hours. Um, during the work week, I keep it a little bit shorter just because I wake up earlier. Um, on the weekends, I have it a little bit more extended. So I have two different sleep schedules. And when your sleep schedules are activated um, and after 10 p.m., it will light up in this corner here. Um, the little sleeping Z's that everybody can catch your Z's, right? So it'll have a little Z in the upper uh, left-hand corner for you. And then the other feature is something called exercise. Now, I really wasn't sure about the whole exercise thing until I really started doing a lot more exercise this year. I activate that when I go on my long walks or exercise with my dog. And what it basically does is it turns your insulin down uh, pretty much to a negative 90% or 90% decrease or up to 100% decrease as you're exercising. It basically cuts your basal back super duper low um, so that you really, to prevent lows. Temporary, if I click on, in order to do a temporary, you have to have control IQ turned off. So I can't do temporary uh, increases or decreases with control IQ because the idea behind control IQ is that it's doing that for you. Um, I do run with control IQ. I don't have problems with it. So if you go to my pump, that's the next thing down here. You have personal profiles, control IQ, alerts and reminders, and the pump info. So if you click on the pump info, it just gives you all the information for the pump itself, how to contact customer support. Alerts and reminders, which I have right here. So I have pump reminders. Um, you can turn this to the pump beeps when your blood sugar is low, when it's high, when you bolus, when you missed a meal bolus. I don't have any of those turned on. Um, and then there's also pump alert. So I have the auto off feature on every 12 hours. So if you do not touch this insulin pump within 12 hours or, you know, say, hey, I'm here, it will scream at you and it will auto shut off. I've had it auto shut off on me multiple times at work. Not really a big deal when you work in dentistry because all you hear is beep, beep, beep of all these machines. But I can tell when it does this and all you have to do is when it does it, you just have to wake the pump up, hit your one, two, three, hit resume insulin and it'll resume it back for you. The reason why it has this safety feature is just to make sure, hey, are you alive? Are you working? Are you okay? 
um, to make sure it's continuing to deliver insulin for you. Uh, the low insulin, um, you can change that to when your reservoir gets below a certain level. I used to have it at 20. I now have it at 10 units, and it'll alert me when I'm below that level that I need to change. Then if you go into Control IQ, if you click it here, uh, obviously Control IQ is turned on. It gives you that feature. Um, the best advice I can give you is to put a very accurate weight in there as best as you can um, to determine, give Control IQ the best algorithm to correct your blood sugars for you. And give it a good idea of how much insulin you use every single day. To shut Control IQ off, all you have to do is hit this button. Um, and things like that. And now your weight in units, you can change from pounds to kilograms, depending on what you... Um, what country you're in and then it said to con turn control IQ off all you have to do is slide that button to the uh, left hand side there and it'll turn that little dial off going to personal profiles this is exactly where you can create multiple different profiles for your basal rates and your insulin to carb ratios your corrections etc um, I find that this is a little monotonous on this pump unfortunately this is just my opinion um, I had a hard time adjusting things when I first got this pump and now that I've got it mastered it doesn't bother me now but I think it's a little confusing when you look at some of the different things, because it's all in a list format. It doesn't have it broken down into nice little chunks. Omnipot actually did a really nice job, especially the dash, where it showed you kind of like a little graph saying, okay, my basal rate's X amount of units at this time. This is in a list format, so it's a little bit more confusing for maybe some people to picture. But my standard is just my standard, and it's on, but you can make multiple profiles. Say you need one that's different for your work. Um, say you need one that's different for your weekending or your traveling or whatever. I just have one standard pump setting, and I let Control IQ do the rest. So if you go to pump settings, um, quick bolus, you can turn that on. I don't use it. What that basically is is you can command this power button, I believe, to um, if you click it so many different times, it will bolus so many units for you. Some people like that is like if they're in, you know, some sort of setting where they want to be quiet or they don't want to look like they're maneuvering on an insulin pump. If they want to say, okay, I want one button push to be equal to two units. So if I click one, two, three times um, with this top button, it's going to automatically disperse six units to my pump. I don't really care for that feature. I think it can be a bit dangerous if you're not careful um, as well as it's kind of useless for me. But you can certainly use it if you'd like. I really don't have experience with that. So if any of you have had experience with the quick bullets option on the T-Slim X2, please let me know. Uh, max bolus is how many units of insulin your pump will give you at a time. I keep it at 10. I really do not like to give myself more than even six or seven units at a time for a meal. So um, that's even with an injection. So I keep that at 10 and then basal limit is at two units per hour. So meaning my basal rate won't exceed more than two units per hour for a standard setting. Um, so if I click the standard and on, um, you can duplicate um a temp uh, setting that you have and then alter it if you need to. You can delete it, which I'm not going to. Uh, you can rename it. If I go to edit, it's going to show you exactly what my basal rates and everything are uh, for my standard profile. Now, keep in mind, what I'm showing you is my rates. This doesn't mean that your rates are going to be this way, and I, I cannot caution this enough. I have been a type 1 diabetic YouTuber for a long time. People always say, oh, what would be my rate for X, Y, and Z? First of all, consult a physician. Number two, my rates are going to be way different than yours. My rates have changed quite a bit drastically from over four years because when you're first diagnosed, your, your pancreas is still producing some insulin. I know mine doesn't do much, if any, anymore because my correction factors are pretty more resistant and I keep mine a little bit more of an aggressive treatment. My endocrinologist still cannot figure out why I use such an aggressive treatment and it works for me. And I said, I don't know. I said, this is what I found works to keep my blood sugars as normal as possible. And she'll tweak some things, but uh, for the most part, we're pretty much on the same page to keep my blood sugars healthy. Um, so if you click here, so this is going to show you just one setting that you're in now. So I'm in the 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. setting, correct? So it shows me my basal rate is 1. My insulin uh, correction factor is uh, 1 unit will drop me 57 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, carb ratio is 1 unit per 7 grams. And my target blood sugar in Control IQ, it's an automatic 110. That's the one thing I do not care for about Control IQ. I want to delve more into what Control IQ really is like. Um, it sets your target at 110. I think my... I think Target should be aiming for blood sugars in the 80s or 90s because that's healthy, right? I mean, so is 110. But uh, unfortunately, with Control IQ as well, it, it, it keeps your insulin duration or active insulin IOB at a five-hour setting. For me, I personally notice when I bolus, five hours is just too much. Um, I typically say every two hours I can take a correction and know most of that insulin is worn off. And I've gotten many diabetic educators 
just complaining to me about when I do that. And, he, and here's what I'm telling you. If it wasn't working or what I, if I wasn't thinking that was correct, I'd be going low all the time, right? So let's say, you know, I, I always say every two hours. So let's say I took a shot now. So it's 7.30 at night now. And I'm still high at 9.30. I'm still going to, I'm going to take another correction. Um, if that was not correct for my body for the insulin duration hours to be two, I'd be really low all the time for taking corrections, right? My blood sugars would be 50s, 40s, you know, dropping really dangerously all the time. They're not. They're dropping to healthy levels. So for me, Humalog does not last longer than two hours in my body. And I'm not trying to sound stern in this video. I'm trying to be real and honest with you. When it comes to managing your diabetes, you know your body best. So don't let some uh, diabetes educator or anybody push you. Now, they're there to guide you and help you. And I appreciate their help. And, you know, especially if you're newly diagnosed, they can get you on a right roll. But ultimately, you're going to know what's best for your body, right? So anyways, I'm going to stop talking about that. If you click the three bars here, this will show you exactly what the insulin duration hours are. And then the carbohydrates is on for me. Basically, it's going to um, take into carbohydrates as a factor for when you bolus for um, insulin. And that's what most people use as insulin to carb ratios, right? Some people use sliding scales. Um, so that feature can be turned off if you use sliding scales. If you click the three bars here, as I kind of had done previously, it takes you into all your settings. So I have multiple different settings, and this is where it gets confusing with Tandem. So you have to go from a 12 a.m. to a 12 a.m., right? Because that's, you know, a whole 24 hours. So at 12 a.m., it gives you my basal correction, carbs, target blood sugar. Um, 6 a.m., it switches a little bit for me. Uh, 11 a.m., it switches again. Um, and then 4 p.m., it switches again. And 10 p.m., again, it switches. It just just minor switches in either basal or correction factors for me, pretty much. Um, and the tricky part with tandem is when you see this all in a list, you're, like, thinking, oh, did I miss something? And no, it isn't. Um, because if you're going 12 a.m. to 10 p.m., it automatically will jump your 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. as what you have as your 10 p.m. factor. So it gets really confusing when you look at this like this. And I really wish they would have done a little bit better job. Um, to edit this, my endocrinologist had to help me because I'm like, you know what, I know what time you want me to adjust it for, but how long do you want me to keep my uh, correction factor at 1 to 63? So we, we, we figured out the sensitivity is a little bit more for me, you know, in the overnight hours and more so in the later hours, but during the day I'm a little more resistant. So we kept the correction factor at like 57 for my, you know, my work day. Um, so if you want to add a block of time, you would click this. And then you would hit the start time, and then it would press to set up, and then you would click AM or PM to add a segment. So you have to literally, with tandem, you have to break it down into segments. Um, and you can tell I have multiple different segments that I can X out of and clear. Um, I'm broken down into four, uh, excuse me, five different uh, time settings or five different time periods. Um, if I click any of these tags, it will delete them. Um, but I've had mine pretty well set for a while. And they're real easy to change once you get this set up. It's real easy to go in and change your timing. Um, a big factor into keeping really good blood sugars is figuring out your timing and what your sensitivity and your carb ratios and your basals are at different times of the day. Especially your basal rates. If your basal rates are off, everything's going to be off, right? Um, I just tweaked my basal rates again. I just slowly increased them just slightly. And I do by a 0 0.05 or a 0 uh, 0.1 uh, increases. I don't go more than 5 to 10% at a time. And you gradually do that, wait out a good week at least to see how it's improving or disproving you. And if you start noticing I'm really high or really low, it's time to either crank it down or drop it back off, right? Um, so when you see it in a segment like this, it can get extremely, extremely, extremely confusing for a lot of people. And I, I said, even for me, it was. And, and I'm not, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm really, you see, it does it again. It's a nice little alert setting. Um, the nice thing is, is when you go to edit a, um, say I was to go in and edit this, it will suspend your insulin for you so you, that you don't accidentally uh, auto bolus yourself, which is super duper nice because you just never know if you can accidentally push something and then all of a sudden you have problems. Um, but once you get these blocks of time figured out, of, okay, when am I most, and the only reason, way you can get these time settings blocked out like I do, yours might not be 12 a.m., 6 a.m., 11 a.m., yours may be... Uh, 12 a.m., 4 a.m., 8 a.m., you might have to go in four-hour segments that your your insulin needs to change that much. Usually, they typically say to start every six hours, so you're kind of breaking your time periods into four different zones. Um, I'm a six-hour, a five-hour, a five-hour, and a six-hour, so I'm broken down into, you know, four to five different zones that are just a little bit, you know, 
more rigorous than typical at certain times. Um, some people will do a straight 24 hour where their basil is all identical. But this is how you're able to chop your basil rates up here in the tandem pump to where you have a basil rate that's 1.1 from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. And then at 6 a.m. I switch to 1.3. At 11 a.m. I switch to 1.25. At 4 p.m. I switch back to 1. And then back at 10 p.m. I'm at it to 1.3 units per hour. Um, so it can get very, very confusing if you don't know how to deal with this and I would recommend having an endocrinologist or a diabetes educator go through here and kind of show you how to maneuver through that a little bit better um, but I can back out of here fully um, so that's all my pump settings and that's everything really that's on this um, and then you can go to the bottom here my CGM this is where you start a sensor calibrate CGM alerts and has your transmitter ID as well as CGM info when you insert it in hardware, software numbers, you can actually call um, if you have an issue with your CGM. Now, if you have an issue with your Dexcom G6 and the Tandem TSLM X2 pump, they will direct you to Tandem's customer support and they will replace your Dexcom for you. Um, with the CGM, which I found was super nice, somebody told me this trick and I love it, you start your CGM on your um, insulin pump, you don't have to hit the start button on your phone, it will automatically sync, which is super nice. Uh, device settings, if you go here, you can have the display settings. It'll change your brightness on here. Uh, my screen timeout's every 120 seconds, which is every two minutes. Bluetooth settings, um, if you click on that, make sure that there's a connection to your mobile device. Um, time and date, sound volume, I have my sound volume down. And then the security pin, you can put this on if you have a child that might be messing with your insulin pump or something of the sorts, um, to where you'd have to put a pin in before you hit the one, two, three. Um, this may be helpful as if I ever have kids in the future and they grab mom's pump and start playing with it. I don't need them bullishing things when I'm not ready for it, right? So you can put a security pin so that you're, you're, obviously your kid can't go one, two, three and bolus for you, um, kind of thing. And then if you go to history, this will show you your pump and your CGM history as to when you inserted things, when you've bolus things, things like that. Your delivery summary, your daily dose, your bolus and basal units for the day. When you loaded a cartridge, what your blood sugars were, any alarms or alerts um, that you may have had from the pump. Now, in the nearly two years that I've used a Tandem TSLM X2 pump, I've never had the pump have a failure problem with me. Um, I did get an email notification, and I will um, kind of put some pictures here what the email looked like. It was basically saying that a lot of people were having problems with battery life being incorrect or not properly functioning. Um, and I personally haven't noticed this at all. It's... I think it's really more sporadic. I charge my pump pretty regularly. Um, I don't let it really get below 50, 40, 30% before anything. Um, I had my pump die on me before and it died on me at work. Unfortunately, when it dies, the uh, CGM readings will no longer be there and it will go to a normal screen and you will be without control IQ if you so badly rely on it. Um, it won't be good for you. Now, I rely more on control IQ during my work week because... My work week can get kind of crazy and kind of sporadic with how much exercise or how little exercise I'm getting for the day. Uh, and my job is so yo yo y and up and down that I really need to have that basal adjustments. Um, I really like Control IQ because you can have those basal adjustments beyond what your normal uh, device settings or your normal pump settings show, right? So if I'm at 1.3, you know, for my morning part of my day, but I'm really insulin resistant that morning or I'm dehydrated. Control IQ is going to increase my normal basal rate. It might be up to 1.8 or 2.0 units an hour. And, and, and its job is to keep your blood sugars between 70 and 180. And its target for you is 110. So it really is a great feature. And overall, it's got more uh, pros than it does cons. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything there is to a Tandem TSLM X2 pump. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to let me know down below. But I think I explained this pretty well. And... Looks like Maddie's going to have to change her insulin pump before work tomorrow, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope I was able to explain this pretty well and give you a good idea of exactly what a tandem pump looks like, and I delved in a little bit of my personal settings and some of my personal experiences and how I deal with my type 1 diabetes, but it's in hopes to help you. Now, I can't, you know, fully manage your diabetes for you and, you know, always seek a medical doctor for advice and know that I'm not a healthcare provider in that realm. I am a dental hygienist. Um, but my hopes would be that if any of you want to switch to a tandem pump or would like to switch to a tandem pump in the future or, um, don't really know how the tandem pump works because you're new to it or you're just unsure, I hope that I am a guide for you and, um, I hope my advice can kind of help you figure out what's best for your diabetes and what isn't because, 
Um, you know, the more experience you get and the more um, different things you try, the better off you get, right? So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. I post as often as I can about type 1 diabetes plus more. Please stay tuned. I have a lot more videos coming out. Um, it's just going to take a little bit of time um, just due to some other life factors that came up. But I'm very happy to have been doing this video for you. And I hope it was helpful and useful. And I will see you guys in my next video. So until then, take care. God bless. Be kind. Spread positivity. And be thankful. And you have no idea how grateful I am to have you guys in my life. Thank you again for your continued support. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.